Hey, hey guys, Odie here. Welcome back to Novena Diablos Part 6. You know what we do? Let's just get right back into it. As usual, this might take a moment. There's still some time left. Who should I visit? Oh, shoot. Ah, uh, it's gonna start me off with a choice. Um, she has that much trust in me, huh? I feel like she is a succubus, though. I feel like that's kind of the whole thing. Kind of want to see what weird stuff is up with Sumi. I kind of want to... Yeah. Because a witch is a human. I'm telling you. Let's go. All right. Okay. I should go see Sumi. I was told that Sumi Choi is at the abandoned school. I'll be honest. I've only met her once, but that was enough for me to know that we don't get, get along all too well. I had previously assumed she was one of the local weirdos, but as it turns out, Sumi isn't even around here. After having witnessed supernatural insanity firsthand, Sumi's words suddenly don't sound so crazy anymore. After all, she's the only one who warned me to leave this place. If Sumi is a human rather than a demonic monster, she may know more about what's going on here in Hope Hill Village. According to the motel owner, she may not actually be a student. I'm curious about who she is. She's truly a witch trying to deceive me. She may just be among the most novel liars I've ever met. Confused and with a head full of questions, I enter the abandoned school. There's a dirty, rundown open space that must have served as a playground once. And the main building's pathetic state is clear evidence that no one's been here in a long time. And soon we should be around here somewhere. I decided to look around. And there she is. Standing next to an abandoned storage building with her eyes closed. It's so eerie that it's hard to muster up the courage to approach her. Is Sumi Choi really a human? I recall while I was told my mysterious messages. Apparently, it's possible that Sumi Choi is a witch, but that's not saying that she's not human, even if she is a witch. I'm telling you. Okay. If that's true, maybe me having come here is already part of her plan. No. I can't let death doubts like that sway me right now. Right now, I simply don't know whether she's a human or a monstrous witch, where an unfounded suspicions and fear will only, in only hinder my progress. I've made up my mind about all this. At the very least, I'll ignore all those gloomy possibilities while with Sumi. I take a deep breath and walk towards Sumi. Hey, uh, Sumi Choi, right? Sumi just glances at me without bothering to answer. Is she gonna just outright ignore me? I don't want to repeat myself, so I quietly watch her. It looks like she's not just standing there, but actually meditating instead. Laid out in front of her is a mat with small flags and burning incense on it. The atmosphere surrounding her is strange. All these mysterious objects weirdly accentuate Sumi's peculiar appearance. Appearance, the combination of it all looks strangely intriguing. If I hadn't had my demonic encounter, I would have been quick to label her a weird esoteric nutcase. Now, however, I'm actually interested in the meaning behind these objects and what it all stands for. Why are you here? Uh, sorry? I said, why are you here? Well, just passing through, you know? But hey, what are you doing? What's this all about? Some sort of meditation? I'm praying. Praying? A specialized retrograde anti-haunt prayer. Oh. Cool. I think I've de definitely heard that term before. But what exactly is it? Excuse me. What's that all about? Hey, are you listening to me? <laughs> to ward off a deadly plague spreading ghost! She sounds quite angry at the fact I didn't instantly know what a specialized retrograde anti-haunt prayer was. <laughs> She seems angry and highly disappointed in me at the same time. Up until now, Sumi's always been really reserved and withdrawn, so this emotional out emotional attitude is a bit much for me to handle. 
언제까지 여기 있을 거지? How long will you be here? What? 놈들이 널 죽일 거라고. They're going to kill you. 분명히 말했을 텐데. I'm certain I've already told you that. Yeah, you actually did. There's a pronounced lack of details though, you know. Got more info to convince me to believe it? I can't keep myself from talking now. I've actually been really patient so far. Huh. Simi lets out a frustrated shot, sigh and keeps her mouth closed. Yep, this is really happening. She's completely ignoring me. I do my best to stay calm and composed to, and look at Sumi. <laughs> Safe to say that she's not an ordinary human being. Her whole attitude and mere mention of another murder in the future leads me to believe she knows something about what's happening around here. If Sumi is a real human, she may actually be of great help to me while I'm stuck here. Or I have it all wrong and this is an act upon by a witch out to get me. Even then, I could manage. If I appear weak and defenseless in the eyes of a witch, in that case, she might let down her guard and accidentally drop a clue or two for my survival. Either way, I have nothing to lose by associating with Sumi. That means for now, I'll have to cope with her weirdness. I'll tell Sumi that I'll help her. Well, she is pretty mean. It might be worth it to offer help first. Is there ever anything I can do to help? What? what? Sumi stares at me with wide, incredulous eyes. <laughs> they don't look very wide. <laughs> no doubt taken aback by my sudden behavioral shift. Maybe this is too sudden. I'm the awkward one now. I think about it and take a business card out of my wallet. People tend to be more at ease once they know more about my occupation. I'm a program director, actually. Surely you've heard of News Trace? Eh. Sumi looks completely lost. Has she really never heard of News Trace before? Well, you see, it's the show. You mean creating things that are shown on TV? Huh? Well, yeah, it's on TV. The broadcast's content is all about. I don't care. It doesn't interest me. You said you want to help me? Dumbfounded for a moment, I try to process what just happened, then quickly nod. Sumi seemed quite nervous when I came, uh, when I came to my offer for help. Help doesn't sound too bad, right? I can help you with trivial stuff. Move your things, maybe prepare your setup, stuff like that. Hmm. I see. You'll have to be properly prepared. You'll have to be properly prepared. Huh? What? Did I just hear that right? Be prepared for what, exactly? Are you just gonna keep standing there? You said you'd help me. Oh, yeah. Okay. I approach her, and she points at the mat that's laid out in front of her. Does she want me to sit down? I hesitate for a brief moment before sitting down in front of her. There's a small statue-looking statue, statue doll-like thing that she must have picked up from God knows where. As well as several other highly suspicious objects. The whole procedure doesn't stop there. Sumi opens her bag. And proceeds to take out a sinister-looking talisman. We shall proceed with the ceremony of receptive consciousness adaptation. We are, and what's it all about? Sumi doesn't bother answering my question and puts a talisman on the statue in front of me. It's even more bizarre and sinister up close. Follow my words. Great merciful harmonious tree. Great harmon- what? Great merciful harmonious tree. Great merciful harmonious tree. Keep repeating these words diligently. Never stop, never rest, pour your heart and soul into it. What is this? Some kind of spell? Once more, Sumi doesn't bother answering me and is already preparing something else. Oh boy, got it, got it, alright. Sumi stands in front of me, carefully holding the talisman while chanting the incantation. I can't help but blankly stare at this bizarre, ridiculous scene. I can see Sumi quietly glaring at me. So I guess whatever this is has started now. Um, Great Merciful Harmonious Tree. 
Sumi seems to be back in the here and now. She holds the talisman upward towards the sky and starts twirling and dancing around. All this is highly dubious, but since I'm already here, I may as well do it properly. I carefully begin to recite the incantation in earnest. Despite being far from religious, I pray as if begging for mercy in front of God himself. If this is what it takes for me to survive in this hellhole, so be it. Great Merciful Harmonist Tree. Great Merciful Harmonist Tree. All of this goes on for about 10 minutes. It feels a lot longer than that, though. Sumi is mumbling something under her breath and is sweating from all the wild dancing, and I keep repeating the words without rest. After a while, Sumi stops. Whew! Something's wrong. Why does Sumi look so irritated? No. You. Yes? I explicitly told you to pour your heart and soul into it. But I did! I never stopped, not even once. Your mind was unfocused, tarnished by irrelevant thoughts. Hey, how can you say that? I desperately did my best. You saw how hard I tried. I protest and argue like a devout worshipper whose faith is being questioned. Hmm. You can't help it. Can't help what? It's only natural. It's only natural for ordinary common folk to have clotted profane thoughts. This was a mistake. Seriously? I will have to cleanse you first. Wait, cleanse? Me? Hey, could you like, answer me? While still ignoring me to a frighteningly stubborn degree, she walks towards her bag, this time grabbing a small bottle, bottle of water. She shakes the water bottle several times and mutters something to herself again. Out of nowhere, she suddenly starts taking off her clothes, starting with her jacket, and wait, even the under... Oh, hey, 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 time out. What are you doing? What are you doing? Remember the incantation. I lower my head and try to suppress my wildly accelerated heartbeat. What is all this? What the hell is happening? I, um, great merciful harmonist tree. As I recite the incantation, I open my eyes and look at Sumi. It's incredibly embarrassing to look at. She's dancing around this large open space, spraying water on herself while completely naked. Isn't it way too cold for that? No, wait. Something else is more important. Doesn't she feel any embarrassment? I bow my head again. No more looking. I'll just focus on reciting the words and that's it. Great Merciful Harmonist Tree. Great Merciful Harmonist Tree. Great Merciful Harmonist Tree. Whoa! Shocked by the sudden, unexpected baptism, I open my eyes. Sumi is stark naked, now standing right in front of my face, too close for comfort. Hey, 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 put some clothes on. Sumi lifts me up with the most innocent, casual expression on her face. And spews water from her mouth on me again. <laughs> What's all this about now? What are you doing? Don't stop praying. Yeah, yeah, but please, clothes. Sumi shows no signs of stopping anytime soon. Instead, she scolds me and takes another swig of water. Damn. What have I gotten myself into? Great Merciful Harmonist Tree. <laughs> Great. After several more water bottle slash saliva baptisms, I sit there feeling empty. It's early winter, which means I'm freezing my butt off on top of everything. I feel like the last shred of dignity as a human being has been stripped away. I quietly stare at Sumi. She's... Dancing around while holding the talisman, it's worth mentioning that she's wearing clothes again. Great merciful harmonist tree. I'm obviously not stopping, not after I made it this far. I'll just do whatever she asks me, now I can have an actual choice in the matter now. I try to keep my doubts at bay. The voice in the back of my head repeatedly telling me, this is totally nuts. Stop. <sighs> Whew. Sumi stops dancing. <laughs> Darn it. <laughs> Can't be done. What? Why? Your thoughts are too rampant, infiltrated by a plethora of misconceptions. I want to say something in my defense, I really do. But she's actually right. It's true my mind was all over the place and unfocused. I'd love to tell her that she hadn't, if she hadn't stripped naked and showered me in spit water, maybe I would have been able to concentrate more. But my social skills tell me I should probably keep that to myself. Okay. Moving around this much is very exhausting. This will have to do for today. Sumi, speaking like an old lady awaiting her next pension check, starts packing her bag. 
After we're done, she simply walks away without saying goodbye. And I lay down on a nearby bench, feeling utterly exhausted. My whole body aches. I'm physically exhausted. I'm exhausted physically and mentally. Wow. I pull out my smartphone and take a look at myself. This is insane. She really put me through my paces. I wipe my face and hair at the hem of my coat. I think it's safe to say that casually stripping naked in front of a stranger, a grown man even, is certainly not normal behavior. Of course, none of what followed was normal by any standard either. Still, Sumi simply doesn't strike me as just another insane person. I mean, she's crazy, yeah, but there's more to her. At the very least, she's aware that something bad is happening around here. Does she truly have the ability to ward off evil ghosts and keep them away from this place? Does that mean I'll be able to keep going along with more stuff, such as today? Uh, Sumi's last words come to mind. She said, this will have to do for today. But that implies, I can only shudder at the thought of what else she's got in store for me. I shake my head and let out a long, defeated sigh. Before heading to my next destination, I think about some things more. All the weirdness aside, it seems like I'll be able to find Sumi here at the school in the future. And better or worse, she's willing to help me and won't reject me. I'm honestly a little scared of what awaits in future meetings with her. Anyway, if I want to see her again, I should drop by the abandoned school when I can. I walk away and move on to my next destination. After finishing my late lunch, I return to the motel. My whole body aches. I'm exhausted. Come to think of it, this has actually been quite an eventful day. But still, I can't afford taking a break. Well, I already have enough things lined up that I need to do next. According to the motel owner, the people in this village go back to their homes at around 1 o'clock and stay inside until the evening. Maybe it's part of some crazy religious doctrine. Are they going inside to pray? Hell, I don't know. What's important is that I have a limited time frame in which I can move around freely without having to worry about the villagers. This means I don't have much time to gather hints throughout the village. My whole body feels heavy. I raise myself with a loud grunt. According to the information given to, given to me by the witness, the village was designed to accommodate the summoning of five monsters. That means the villagers must have surely collected a lot of data and information so they can properly serve the monsters. If I can gather this data, I can find out about the monsters' traits and characteristics. Maybe if I use that knowledge while analyzing the murder sites, I can pinpoint who the real culprit is in each case. Okay, I should have a look around the area in the afternoon. There's not a lot of time during which I can move about freely without, prying, without the prying eyes of the villagers on me. Time flies by fast. I should focus on one area. Alright, where should I go? Moving requires points. You have seven in total. Okay. We have river, once a sprawling fishing area. This place has been long abandoned by every living soul. However, someone has clearly been here recently. Uh, forced to the south of Hope Hill Village, there are traces of construction having carried out in preparation for the ritual. Abandoned school, we already know about that. A uh, lake, a very big lake. The buildings around it tell the story of a once prosperous past, but past is past. Abandoned village, a village where people once lived, decaying buildings now remain instead of people. Let's check out the river. Oh, can I go? Oh, there's even more places. Oh boy. Um, let's go to the fishing shed. I go to the fishing shed near the river. It's an old fishing warehouse near the river. There are traces of people having been here recently. Okay, this is where I'll look around today. I see a long steel box. Phew, it's tightly locked. I'm unable to force it open by hand. Upon closer inspection, I notice a really small keyhole. Maybe the key's around here somewhere? I mutter to myself and look around. Let's check the boat. I look inside the boat. That sparkle, I wonder what that is. I reach out and pick up a shiny object. A key! Convenient. I wonder if it'll help me with something I couldn't get open before. <laughs> I turn my head and look in the other direction. I slide the key into the box's keyhole. The key goes in smoothly. Now that's what I'm talking about. I put the key down and open the box. The book's cover shows a gloomy design. 
This one's titled Tracking the Ooh, Tracking the Witch. Even I have heard of it, despite not having any interest in the occult at all. It's absurd to think that a witch was supposedly behind the impeachment of our former president. Originally planned by a series compromising seven volumes, it was banned after the release of volume one. This is the fourth. Uh, it cannot be attained through normal legal channels. I think this is important evidence. I put the book in my bag. Alright, should I keep looking around? Might as well. There's an old cathode ray, uh, ray tube TV. Something rarely seen these days. I don't have time to be watching TV right now. Hold on, what's this? I'll look at the TV again. There's something underneath it. The Nine Day Ritual. It's a small book with a pretty intriguing title. I put it in my bag for later. Alright, should I keep looking around? Yeah, what else we got? There's a book that stands out. A friggin' cookbook? There's all sorts of delicious recipes for fish-based <laughs> dishes inside. How does that help me? Exactly, not at all. I stand back up, roughly tossing the book aside. Um, I look through the back door. It's empty inside, except for some random junk laying around. That's... I see a magazine on the floor. Maybe someone threw it away after having read it? It's an occult magazine called Monthly Satanism. Not exactly what I usually read, but considering the circumstances, it might be of interest to me. Guess I'll give it a read. I put the magazine in my bag. Should I keep looking around? If we can. Oh. The Fog Shroud River creates an eerie atmosphere. There's no way of telling where it leads. It's as if the entire world has itself has been cut off. I turn around. I shouldn't drag myself down with such gloomy thoughts. There are two paper boxes. I look inside uh, the open one first. Nope, it's empty. I reach out to the box sealed with tape while sighing. Hopefully this won't, this won't disappoint as well. Fortunately for me, the tape is pretty worn already, making it easy to open. Now then, what's in here? Hmm? There are several books inside the formerly sealed box. I couldn't care less about most of them, but one in particular stands out. It's a book giving off an ominous vibe. It's titled Unde's Undead Survey Diaries Volume 2. These are writings of a novelist who conducted research regarding the undead. The villagers appear to have gathered info on the undead with the help of these diaries. I see. This will help me understand the identifying characteristics of the undead. Okay, this is important evidence. I put the book in my bag. Alright, should I keep looking around? There's a pile of paper so moist that it's stuck to the ground. I search through it carefully as to not tear anything. After a while, I find a small book within the pile. Looks like some sort of occult writings. Take a closer look and it appears to be a book about the history of the succubus. Maybe it'll be helpful. I decide to take it with me. Alright, should I keep looking around? There's all sorts of clutter inside. Let me see. I open the box first. It's full of useless junk. Hmm. Then I check out the round canister next to it. There's a lot of firewood inside the barrel. Maybe who was ever here was trying to make a fire? I start removing the firewood by hand. Oh, what's this? I find a book that's still in good condition. I grab the book and take it out. It's an old and mysterious book. It's titled Succubus Summoning Diaries Volume 1. Hmm. It's the story of a nobleman who tried to summon a succubus. If this nobleman actually succeeded, his research could contain a vast amount of helpful info. I put the book in my bag. These findings will help me greatly. Alright, should I keep looking around? I've looked around some more, but I couldn't find anything else. That's all for now. Village records updated. I took too long. I should go before the villagers find out. I take a look at what I've gathered so far on my phone. Three pieces of monster information as well as three village logs. Alright, I should give this a careful read. Your items are under the monster info and village logs. The monster info, uh, the culprit behind each case can be found. Ooh. Click on monster info. All right. Vampire records will serve as an example. Click on the book. This gives you a keyword as evidence. Ancient demon language. Uh, right click to close after reading. 
Uh, click on the case clues. Compare traits of a vampire to the crime scene info. Vampires speak an old language, but you found a different language. Therefore, a vampire could not have done it. It can be found. So click the left note. We are trying to see who it wasn't, so think. So... So what I put... That's right, the culprit isn't a vampire. The vampire is now a suspect now. Do this as well with the others, the remaining one is guilty. It's tough to find out who the real human being is, so stay vigilant. Alright guys, that was part 6 of Novena Diablos. I really hope you guys enjoyed. Looks like the story's starting to get really, really good. We're finally starting to get in, to know some of these demons. Trying to find out who the real human is. If you guys like it and you guys want to figure it out yourself, there's a link in the description for you guys. If you guys like the video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and see ya.